harvest yesterday and I was able to get uh, some poles up here and get that tarp put up so that I could um, be able to sit under here and uh, cook meals in the afternoon when I'm working on the timber frame or the bush camp. I've actually got another tarp that I have purchased to go down there for the bush camp uh, but I don't have any poles set. Anyway, I've got to go down there today uh, for the bush camp. I'm gonna try to start on it. Um, I've got some holes that I'm gonna have to dig to, and some poles that I'm gonna have to cut to make the same sort of a structure where I can make a temporary shelter down there to be able to get out of the sun and also to be able to cook some meals down there where I don't have to come up here if I'm down there working all day. So I had taken the tarp that I had covering my posts and beams that I had cut and moved it over to this temporary shelter. So I've got one that's a little bit larger. I'm going to go ahead and put on here that way I can kind of reach the ground with it because I want to keep these really dry. I don't want them getting wet. Uh, so they will somewhat because of the humidity that we have here in East Tennessee, but I wanted to keep them as dry as possible. So I'm going to go ahead and get that out and uh, get all this covered up uh, before I go down there and work on the base camp. See if you round the edges off, um, when you hammer this in right here, it keeps it from mushrooming out. This here is a mallet that I made out of dogwood. Dogwood is very dense and very hard, as well as persimmon. We have those uh, that are native to East Tennessee as well. Um, but I'm gonna do a little video on how I made this. I found that it is better to carve a hammer or a mallet out of a full stick instead of trying to make a head and uh, running a handle up in that because um, it's least likely to crack that way. The reason that I only put uh, one here, in, I mean three, instead of four, I put one in the middle and tied two sides to it because I've got to be able to lift this up, drive the tractor through it in order to be able to 
stack these logs. So if I just undo these, the two outer ones lifted over, I can drive right over this center pin right here and I can get to the um, logs to unload them and pick them up uh, if I need to. For some reason, my uh, saw, I wasn't able to tighten the chain because there's an adjustment here <clears throat> to pull the bar out to tighten the chain up and for some reason or another it was all the way out and the chain was barely tight so I thought I would take it off and see if I could fix it. I'm not sure if the chain was just too big. I got the chain that called for, so we'll see if this helped it any. Well, it's starting to get a little bit cloudy. I think it's supposed to rain tomorrow. Um, I've got this one dead tree left here that I need to cut, and then there's one leaning over there. It's not quite dead, but it got damaged as I cut a poplar tree when I was um, cutting uh, trees for the timber frame. Anyway, so I'm going to go ahead and cut that out, and I think I'm going to go ahead and take these two out. There's a lot of vines, and the vines, when they grow up into the tree, they just kind of choke it out, and it ends up dying anyway. So I'm going to go ahead and clear those two because I need a good, good size area for the base camp. So I've still got that pile of wood over there as well to cut up. But these trees um, over here, this one right here I'm going to need to cut. And then if you see these two right here, I'm going to go ahead and cut those. And then the one that is leaning up there, I'm going to cut that one as well.
I don't know if you can see it or not, but see how these vines um, There we go How they get tangled up in the tree chops and choke the tree out. How about that? That was good timing Well, I just seen this in the camera If you see this right here This is the bear track Here's the toes and right there's where the claws are and it's about the size of my hand. I've got the tops or the trees actually cut down uh, even though they were living they were in the way but I'm going to use them for support for the deck and the structure so that's a good trade-off. Um, it was thundering a while ago it's not supposed to rain today it's supposed to rain tomorrow but it may be getting here early so I'm going to go ahead and call it a day. Well, I managed to get that top cut up and got it sectioned off into firewood. Um, I was going to show you here something that I use quite often when I'm cutting wood for the timber frame home. Um, and I decided to walk up there and get it because I'd actually forgot it. But it's called a story pole. Um, some of you may know what it is, some of you may not. But what this is, is this is a five foot stick and it's marked off right here I scored it with a knife in one foot sections and so a lot of times those that were cutting lumber uh, instead of carrying a tape measure and actually losing it or something they would whittle out a stick like this and then they would place it on the end of their log and then they would flip it over and however many times they flipped it over depending on how long it was and how many uh, foot or feet was marked on it um, would determine the length. So this is five foot. If I put it on the end, flip it over one time, that's a ten foot log. Um, I think what I'm going to go ahead and do is just section these up in six foot lengths. I'm going to use the bigger poles to go on the bottom and the shorter poles to go up on top because they're probably not going to be more than two or three feet long up here on the top and then probably anywhere from four to six feet on the bottom. <laughs>
You know, I just thought of something that was really funny. Um, if you have been sitting back there uh, secretly laughing behind the camera, because I had these shorts on and these legs are so white, it's because they never see the daylight. I primarily wear jeans all the time, but it seems like anymore it just gets hotter and hotter every year. Um, it actually didn't really feel good with that sawdust flying back and hitting the bare legs, but it does keep you a lot cooler. So I just wanted to give a lame excuse as to why these legs are not tan, and that's because that they hardly ever see sun because most of my life I have worn uh, jeans to protect myself from, you know, briars and things of that nature um, while I'm out in the woods, but it's almost unbearable. As you can see, I'm sweating here, but uh, these shorts do help a lot. So um, if that was a joke, it's on me. And uh, yeah, that's the reason why. these in the ground I'll burn them that way as I mentioned before it chars the bottom and uh, kind of waterproofs it and bug proofs it as well because the bugs they don't like to chew through the charcoal so serves double purpose Well, I guess you can tell I got the, all the slab wood unloaded. Lord, it's humid out here. Anyway, um, got the trailer back empty where I can uh, use the sawmill um, because it doesn't take very many logs to saw those up to fill that trailer up. Anyway, I just want to say that everybody be safe, take care, make a difference, and hope to see you at the outpost in the future.